So this right here is my refractometer. And I have no water in it now, but I'm gonna put a couple drops in here. So we'll do a couple drops here. I'll close that sample up. And this is just plain water. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fix Dish. And today I have industrial batteries for you. Uh, we're gonna be looking at a 48 volt industrial battery and we're gonna do an acid adjustment on it. We're gonna look at a couple of the tools used and methods uh, to do this adjustment. And uh, hopefully you learned something and if you wanna take a deeper dive into batteries and maybe some more of the specifics and technical things, uh, let me know in the comments below, but enjoy the video. And there's a little screw on top here that you can move your calibration line. We wanna get it right there. Here's the little screw adjustment I was talking about right here. So anyways, clean this lens off. Now that we've got that. Uh, down the middle you'll see that there's uh, ethylene and propylene glycol. That's the freezing point. And on the left side you'll see there's battery acid. And then on the right side you'll see that there's uh, def quality and then washer fluid. And right here I'm pulling a sample out of the battery to test in the refractometer. And we'll put a couple drops on here. Just like that. You know, make sure it covers the plate. And then now, gravity of our battery. So we're looking at the left side and you'll see that we're above the 1.25 and each tick mark is a tenth, uh, a hundredth, sorry. So we're at 1.27, so 1270 gravity. Now is that good or is that bad? It all depends on the battery and the specifications of said battery. Now this battery is charged and equalized. This battery specifies a gravity of 1.280. So we call it 1280. So this is below where it should be. Get a look inside there. And it looks like plain water. Trust me, it is not plain water. It's actually a uh, concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, can't just buy this, you have to get this as a dealer at this concentration level. You can buy battery acid, but just not at that concentration level locally. You can probably get like 1200 gravity, I think, or like 1260, but you can't get 1400. We're gonna use this as a reference sheet. So I've got 24 cells that I'll be looking at. And then I'm just gonna write down my specific gravities and see where we're at, like I said, We've cycled this a few times on the load bank and then we have a high frequency smart charger that we put it on and we have charged this and equalized. So now we're going to figure out what all our gravities are at. And we're doing that with a refractometer. So I like personally I like to go in an order where we call this one, and then we follow the lead heads around. So this is cell one, that's cell 24. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. That's how we kind of number these. That way, if I don't come back to this, I can say, hey, uh, cell number 11 needs looked at. So we'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We'd know that that cell needs looked at. So that's how we keep it straight. But I will take the watering kit off a row at a time and we'll get them set out of the way. That way I don't have a splash hazard. And we'll check all these cells and record them.
Okay, now we're getting into the one that I think has an issue. So far we've averaged between, I'd just say 1265 is what we're averaging. I'm gonna say 1250, which being that low is quite a few points low. We're not quite 1250, but we are at 1255. So I was right on that guess that there's something wrong with that cell. 1255, when it comes to, oops, I almost forgot to write that down. When it comes to batteries at 1280 gravity, 1250 is pretty much half dead. That is. wondering what this is. That is a uh, blinky light out here on the cable. Yeah. To let it know that it's touching water so that the electrolyte is up in this unit. Now there's a few precautions that I take when it comes to playing with batteries. This is one gloves. Safety glasses. But normally I would use a face shield, but because I'm looking into this thing constantly, it makes it very hard because it's very far away from your face. I do recommend the face shield. But then we want to do a good job of flushing the tools you use with water. Because the only solution is dilution and it's not so big a deal for the plastics but you don't want to leave acid in there because if the next guy is kind of careless when he grabs it he might you know touch the thing and then touch his face and then i use a sacrificial screwdriver cheapy harbor freight one i don't care about but i still wash it off I wash off itself because if you leave that acid on here, it will not only corrode the body of this thing, but actually kill the, the seal for the refractometer's face. And it becomes open to the elements and water gets behind the gasket. So I just make sure I wash it all off real good. I let everything air dry. And now that I'm done messing with that, Take off the gloves I was using. And then make sure you wash yourself off because that stuff splashes and it is somewhat irritating to the skin. Even if you didn't feel like you got splashed with it, it's still a good idea. You don't want to touch your skin and touch your face. I'm sure everyone's done it. It's not horribly harmful to your skin, it's just more of an irritant. It is, however, irritating to your mucous membrane, so your mouth, eyes. Like I said, typically we're using face masks. That's usually when you have the battery wide open. It's usually when you have the battery wide open and we're doing acid adjust where we're actually doing like bulk movement of fluid and the likelihood of splashing is very high. And then uh, like I was saying to not cross contaminate this clipboard and pen always stay here. It doesn't go anywhere else. You know you'd hate to you know, put that pen in your mouth or something. Now here's our results. 1270, 1260, 1265, 65, 70, 70, 65, da 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 da. Here's that troublesome one I talked about. That ends up being 1255. And the rest of them appear to be the same. Now, the reason why we're checking this is this battery is brand new. 
and it appeared as if it was not lasting very long. And I will agree that that one was dropping out. This was also post charging and equalize. And that's actually for a brand new battery. That's relatively low starting voltage. But that was the one I was curious about because it stood out. It was the only one that stood out. And then when we go down the load bank, which basically every hour we monitor the voltage as it drops. And here is that number 19 that was suspect. And it significantly drops out more than the rest. And you can cross reference this over to the gravity and see there's a relationship to this. But you'll be able to see that the gravity does affect its ability to have runtime. So because this is below the specified 1280 gravity and we have uh, cycled the battery, which is load banking it and charging it several times with equalize and constant current to try to bring the battery back, this is its optimal numbers in its present state. Our next step is to get it on a constant current. So this is actively gassing and then we will use the gravity, or sorry, we will use the concentrated acid to bring up the gravity numbers. Okay, so I have this battery charger set up to do a constant current. So typically these smart chargers will oscillate voltage up to very, very high voltages. Um, this one is going to not scan for the battery boss. And this will come up to what I set at 25 amps and it will hold 25 amps for a specified amount of time. Now I'm doing this because it is AKA the finish rate of the battery and I need this to run for about 20-30 minutes to come up to gassing voltage so that way this will physically bubble inside and then we're going to go ahead and add the concentrated uh, battery or the concentrated acid levels to this battery and we're going to raise the gravity by doing that. Now the way you do it is by each quarter inch of water height added will dilute the uh, gravity down to X amount. So every quarter inch added of height in the concentrated acid will raise this five points. Five points meaning this will go from like a 1265 to a 1270. The fact that I need a 1280, I need to add three quarters of an inch of the concentrated sulfuric acid to get it up to 1280. This will take a half inch, that will take a full inch, this one will take uh, an inch and a quarter. I will have to make room in these cells because they're all topped off. So I'll have to remove um, acid out of it. And I do that in a clean bucket with this turkey baster looking thing. And I will remove out uh, enough water to make room for what I'm gonna add and concentrate. And that should bring up the uh, acid levels to where I need them to be. And if you made it this far, I would really appreciate if you'd like, subscribe, and share. I'm on the road to try to get to 500 subs, and uh, I would really appreciate your help. Hard to tell. Looks like there's water. But it is uh, seriously hazard water. So I've removed enough didn't have my microphone on so the audio is not great here but basically I removed enough uh, space on top of the battery cell to be able to add concentrated acid I'm doing it with this turkey baster thing basically every full bulb is approximately a little less than a quarter of an inch so this is a kind of an accurate way for me to measure how much acid I'm adding and that way I don't have to do it over and over and over again with just guessing
So we've been mixing for a little bit. So you let these gas for about 20 minutes or so, that way you can mix. Then you come back and you check them. So the cell in question, cell 19, now that we have it adjusted. We're a little over 1270, so needs a little bit more added. Pretty close, just sneaking up on it. It took about two adjustments to get the acid levels up to about 1280 gravity. But now that I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and wash off the top of the battery and in the tray to make sure that I get rid of any leftover sulfuric acid. Uh, that way it doesn't overly corrode anything and uh, make a big giant mess. Now I didn't mention this earlier, but I do have a few things that are nearby um, just in case for accidents. Uh, I have an eye wash station in case I do get some acid in my eyes and there's a shower in case there's a big mess that I need to emergency wash myself off. Uh, you verify all these things work prior to doing work like that. And then also uh, during the video, I had it next to me, you couldn't see it, but I have the uh, acid spill kit in case I make a big giant mess on the ground. It's got absorbent and some other things, but uh, yeah, make sure you have those items available to you. Well, other than drying off, got her all bundled back up. The blinky's working, washed off and flooded. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you guys next time on Fixed-ish.